Carroll had a lot of ideas, and over the years, he was able to make a lot of projects happen. But there is one car that really stands out as being maybe the pinnacle of what he did. Carroll did what everybody wanted to do, but not everybody had the cojones to do. Stuff a giant motor into a very light car. Cobra's a Cobra. I mean, Carroll Shelby's Carroll Shelby. You can't duplicate these things. So who was Carroll Shelby? Wow, how much time do you have? Um, legend, innovator, pioneer? No man in American history in the automotive world is the legend, the well-rounded legend that Carroll Shelby was. Taking his idea of what he thought that the rest of the world would want in a high-performance car, and then having all the talent and all the ability to put all those pieces together beginning in the early 1960s. Not only is he such a legend, such an innovator, but covered so much ground. There is one car that really stands out as being maybe the pinnacle of what he did. The car that back in the day was beyond legendary for racing exploits, high performance street use, and even today continues to just grow with stature. And that was the Shelby Cobra. I mean, Carroll did what everybody wanted to do, but not everybody had the cojones to do. Stuff a giant motor into a very light car. Shelby Cobras, both in small block and big block versions, were dominating racing, and they were also very popular on the street. They were the cars that really won everything, and they were fast, they were nimble, they handled really well. The performance legend of this car, everything from the styling to what the car meant back in the day to what it means to a whole new generation of enthusiasts today, it continues to grow. So by the late 1960s, Ford Motor Company and Shelby's collaborations were coming to an end. But it was, over time, it was the popularity, the demand, the notoriety of the Shelby Cobra that really bubbled to the top to the point where there were so many replicas of that storied car that Carroll thought maybe it might be an opportunity for him to get involved with bringing the nameplate back. Carroll Shelby is the consummate salesman. He could sell you anything, I mean, and you, you'd be happy to buy it from him. And that really did hold true, because he, he got into the business, and I know the continuation cars came about because there was a huge demand. People wanted these cars again, and they wanted them to be the ones that he built. What's better than an original Cobra? Well, a continuation Cobra. Why? Because you've got all of the advances in technology and components. Basically, taking a vintage Cobra look, adding a few minor updates, but having it thoroughly Shelby all the way. There's a direct connection to the original Shelby Cobras from the 1960s to the continuation cars from the modern era. Well, I grew up in Evansville, Indiana. I had a, a lot of different cars that I grew up. It's clear that Scott is a lifelong car enthusiast, but ultimately he ended up with what I consider the centerpiece of his collection, his Shelby Cobra. I bought a magazine business that was headquartered in California and I left it out there. And the people that ran it used to work for Motor Trend and Peterson. That's how we got to talking about cars and buying cars and all that. That's when the Cobra thing came up. Would I be interested in buying a Cobra from Carroll Shelby? And that's what led us to the meeting with Carroll. The thing that interested me about the Cobra was that it was a very rare car. And to be able to buy it from Carroll Shelby and have him talk me through the process, I, I was sold before I even walked in the Bel Air Country Club. You know, a Cobra's a Cobra. Carroll Shelby's Carroll Shelby. You can't duplicate these things. And so four of us go there. There's a big round table, and there's Carroll Shelby sitting there. We sat down. He said, what are you looking for? And I said, you tell me. I don't even know what I'm looking for. Anything that's on that car is something that Carroll Shelby would have put on his own car, because I had no opinion whatsoever. <laughs> it's got the Shelby all aluminum 427 FE engine with aluminum cylinder heads, by the way, and an optional supercharger putting about 750 horsepower, 354 gears and a four-speed rear end. 
he was asking if I was interested in a, you know, a certain color paint, and I said, you know, I don't really have an opinion on that. He says, well, that's good because he said, we will do this in a polished aluminum. And that's very, very rare. I believe they only made four in the exposed polished aluminum, and the etched in the racing stripes. A huge bonus, and will always be a part of this car, is a complete photo series of the actual build of the car, in addition to a bunch of the original paperwork, much of which still has got Carol Shelby signature on it. Combining all of that with the fact that it's a literal time capsule, this car is exactly as it was built 20 years ago and has been under his extreme care during this entire time period. Icing on the cake, Carol Shelby signed this car, and not only in one location, but in three separate locations. He ended up signing it at the Concours de Elegance in Pebble Beach, and it's all documented, but he signed it not only on the dash, where he usually does, but on the supercharger and also in the trunk. So conceivably, perhaps, when Carol was signing, he may have braced himself with his other hand, which means that Carol Shelby's fingerprints could literally be all over this car. That's pretty cool. Being able to sit down with Carol Shelby and have him spec out the car and follow his advice down to the T. Is it the ultimate Shelby continuation? I'm gonna say that it is. Mika Monterey, always a special auction, and it holds a distinction of being the auction where the average price per car is the highest, and that's saying a lot. So I think the blending of the auction and Scott's Shelby Cobra is the perfect venue for the car. It's gotten to the point where I, I don't drive these cars, I didn't drive the, the Cobra, and that's when I decided I would sell it. The closer I get to the car going away, the more emotion comes up. So it, it was, it's fun and that's something that I'm gonna miss, but somebody needs to get this out for people to see. And I hope the new owner does that. It really truly is the only time that we may ever see the opportunity to buy a brand new continuation Shelby with the direct connection to Carroll Shelby himself. It's gonna be an opportunity for Shelby fans that they may never see again in their lifetime.